Hello and welcome to Engineering Inside. Today, we're going to be talking about the different types of beams used in construction. Beams are horizontal structural elements that support vertical loads, shear forces, and bending moments. They transfer these loads to their endpoints, such as walls, columns, and foundations. So let's get started. There are many different ways to classify beams, but we'll be focusing on the following few categories based on different criteria. Based on support conditions. The first way to classify beams is by their support conditions. This refers to the way that the beam is supported at its ends. The most common types of beam supports are simply supported beams. These beams have supports at both ends, and they are free to rotate and deflect under load. Simply supported beams are common in many construction applications, such as floor beams in buildings and bridges. Fixed beams. Fixed beams have supports at both ends, but unlike simply supported beams, they are rigidly fixed. This means they cannot rotate or deflect at the supports. Fixed beams are used when resistance to rotation is needed, such as in the design of building frames. Cantilever beams. Cantilever beams have one end fixed or built into a support structure, while the other end is free. They are often used in situations where you want to project a beam outward, like the diving board at a swimming pool or the overhanging portion of a balcony. Continuous beams. Continuous beams span across more than two supports. They are used when long spans are required, and the load distribution needs to be more even. Continuous beams are commonly found in bridge construction and some building designs. Based on construction materials. Beams can be categorized into different types based on the materials from which they are constructed. The choice of material depends on factors such as the structural requirements, load-bearing capacity, and environmental conditions. Here are some common types of beams based on construction materials. Reinforced concrete beams. Reinforced concrete beams are made of reinforced concrete, which combines the compressive strength of concrete with the tensile strength of reinforcing steel bars. They are frequently used in building construction for floor and roof systems and in bridge construction. Steel beams. Steel beams are popular in construction due to their high strength-to-weight ratio and durability. They are commonly used in the construction of skyscrapers, bridges, industrial buildings, and other structures where strength and stability are paramount. Wooden beams. Wooden beams are constructed from timber or wood. They are commonly used in residential construction for roof and floor framing. Timber beams are also used in some commercial and industrial applications where the load requirements are not as high. Composite beams. Composite beams are made by combining different materials to take advantage of their individual strengths. For example, a composite beam might consist of a steel beam with a concrete slab on top. These beams are used in high-rise buildings and bridges to optimize strength and reduce weight. Based on cross-sectional shapes. Another way of classification of beams is based on their cross-sectional shapes. The choice of cross-sectional shape affects the beam's load-carrying capacity, stiffness, and appearance. Here are some common types of beams based on cross-section shapes. Rectangular beams. Rectangular beams have a simple rectangular cross-section, with the width typically greater than the depth. They are straightforward to manufacture and are commonly used in various construction applications, including building frames and floor beams. T-beams. T-beams have a T-shaped cross-section, with a horizontal flange and a vertical web. These beams are commonly used in the construction of floor slabs and bridges, where the flange provides a wider surface for load distribution. L-beams or angle beams. L-beams, also known as angle beams, have an L-shaped cross-section. They are often used as secondary structural elements or braces in building frames and other applications requiring right angles. Based on geometry. Beams can also be classified by their geometry. This refers to the overall shape of the beam, such as straight, curved, or tapered. Straight beams. Straight beams are the most common and straightforward type of beams. They run in a straight line between their supports and are used in a wide range of structural applications, including building frames, bridges, and overhead supports. Curved beams. Curved beams have a nonlinear, curved shape along their length. They are often used for architectural and aesthetic purposes, such as in the design of arched doorways, domes, and curved roof structures. Tapered beams. Tapered beams have a cross-section that varies in width or depth along their length. They are often used in situations where the load-carrying requirements change, based on equilibrium conditions. Beams can also be classified by their equilibrium condition. This refers to whether the beam is statically determinate or statically indeterminate. Statically determinate beams. Statically determinate beams are those for which all the reactions and internal forces can be determined using the principles of static equilibrium alone. 
In other words, the number of unknowns equals the number of equations of equilibrium. Examples of statically determinate beams include simply supported beams, cantilever beams, fixed beams, and some types of continuous beams with known support conditions. Engineers can directly calculate the reactions and internal forces in statically determinate beams without relying on additional analysis methods. Statically indeterminate beams. Statically indeterminate beams are those for which the number of unknown reactions and internal forces exceeds the number of equilibrium equations. In these cases, additional analysis methods are required to determine the internal forces and reactions accurately. Examples of statically indeterminate beams include continuous beams with more supports than needed for equilibrium, beams with redundant supports, and beams with multiple loads and constraints. Analytical methods such as the flexibility method, slope deflection method, and moment distribution method are often used to analyze statically indeterminate beams. Statically indeterminate beams are common in complex structural systems where redundancy or load sharing between supports is necessary for stability or design requirements. Method of construction. The most common methods of constructing beams are cast-in-place beams. Cast-in-place beams, also known as in-situ beams, are constructed on-site by pouring concrete into molds or formwork that defines the shape and dimensions of the beam. These beams are typically used in building construction and are ideal when precise customization and integration with other structural elements are required. Precast beams. Precast beams are manufactured off-site in a controlled environment and then transported to the construction site for installation. They are often used to speed up construction schedules, reduce on-site labor, and maintain high-quality standards. Precast concrete beams are common in parking structures, bridges, and industrial facilities. Pre-stressed concrete beam. A pre-stressed concrete beam is a structural element made of concrete that has been pre-loaded or pre-stressed with internal forces to improve its performance under load. The goal of pre-stressing is to counteract the tensile stresses that concrete experiences when subjected to loads, enhancing the beam's strength and durability. Pre-stressed concrete beams are commonly used in a variety of construction applications, including bridges, buildings, parking structures, and other infrastructure projects. In addition to the six categories listed above, there are a few other ways to classify beams. Deep beams. A deep beam has considerable depth and its clear span to depth ratio is less than 4. A substantial load is carried to the supports by a compression force combining the load and the reaction. Consequently, the strain distribution is no longer considered linear, as in the case of conventional beams. Girder. A girder beam, often referred to simply as a girder, is a critical structural component used in the construction of buildings, bridges, and various other infrastructure projects. Girder beams serve as primary horizontal support members that distribute loads from other structural elements, such as columns and piers, to the foundations or supports below. They play a crucial role in maintaining the stability and integrity of the overall structure. So, those are the some of the few ways to classify beams in construction. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos.